Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at a questions that illustrate the concept of current ratio and quick ratio. Ratios are important whether you are studying for the FAR exam as well as the audit. So it's very important to understand and know how to apply ratios. Now knowing the formula is a helpful. That's the starting point. They might ask you about what's the formula for the current ratio or what's the formula of the quick ratio. They might. That will be a, should be an easy question. But what they're going to ask you to do is to test you on how to apply those ratios. What happened to those ratios when an event took, takes place? And this is what you need to understand. It's not only memorizing the ratio, which is important. You need to know what the ratios are. And it's important rather than memorizing them, understand them will help you even memorize them better. Because once you understand them, you, you can use logic to find out the answer. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this question and solve it and show you how, it sol how you would solve this questions on the CPA exam. Now, before I start, if you are a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley, or any other CPA course. That's not what I intend to do. I intend to be a useful addition. You can add me to your CPA studies and I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score by understand by help you understand the concept better. I don't assume any knowledge. I teach you the material differently from your CPA review course. Not better, just differently. You might need that different perspective. I teach you the material as if you never saw it before in contrast to your CPA review course. Here's your risk. One month of subscription to check me out. Your potential gain is passing the exam. Are you willing to take that chance? And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA, CPA exam. Whether you are a college student, I have various accounting courses as well. You can check me out. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and check out my LinkedIn recommendation to find out how other students use my system to pass the exam. Like this recording, share it, put it, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. Now let's look at this question to find out what would happen to the ratios. Adam Company, so this is the Adam Company at the end of the year had a current ratio greater than one to one and a quick ratio less than one to one. Now the first thing is you want to know, do you know what how to, how to compute current ratio? Well, current ratio, you have to know this by heart, equal to current assets. You have current assets and you divide current assets by current liabilities and the quick ratio and the quick ratio you have to know how the quick ratio is computed as well we have something called quick assets divide them by current liabilities the first thing you want to notice about these two ratios is that the denominator is the same current liabilities is the denominator in both now, what else do you need to know about current assets and current liabilities and quick assets? You need to know its component. What is in current assets? Well, in current assets, you will find cash, you will find net receivable, you will find short term investments, you will find, I'm going to change colors for a reason, you will, chine, you will find, let me find a better color here, you will find inventory. You will find supplies, you will find prepaid. Those typically are your current assets. Okay, so you're going to take those current assets and divide them by current liabilities. And just know current liabilities are accounts payable, short term debt, accrued liabilities, and so forth. Okay, now you need to know what is composed of the quick asset, and this is important. The quick assets are composed only of three assets, and those are cash. Let me put them in a different color again. Those are cash, account receivable, net account receivable, and short term investments divided by the same thing accounts payable, short term debt, accrued liabilities. So at this point, you should have this memorized in your head. In other words, you, you know exactly what's inside each one of those. Now on the exam, you don't do this. You don't sit down and do this. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to explain to you what goes into current assets and current liabilities. 
abilities. You need to know this. Like this is you need to know even before reading the exam, before reading the question. It's like I already know how to compute current assets and current liabilities. I know what my current assets are. Just remember quick assets. The reason they are called quick assets because they can be quickly turned into cash. Cash itself is a quick asset. You can sell your account receivable and you could liquidate your short term investments, short term investments. OK, short term investments. Now, now you, let's let's focus on the problem itself. They're saying the, the current ratio is greater than one. Let's work with some numbers. If our current ratio, if CR equal to 10 divided by five, simply put, I said we have $10, $10 of current assets, $5 of current liabilities, the current ratio equal to two. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I am going to pay off a dollar from my current assets and a dollar from my current liabilities and see what happened when I pay this dollar. So if I pay a dollar from my current assets, if I pay dollar in cash, I will have nine dollars in cash and four dollars in liabilities. So this is what I did. So if I if I take nine divided by four, it's going to give me two point two five. So what happened to my ratio? My current ratio went up. So simply put, now I'm going to be looking at my answers. Decrease in the current ratio, wrong. Decrease in the current ratio, wrong. I already eliminated two answers quickly. I'm already done with those two answers. So increase in current ratio, yes, I keep C and I keep the increase in current ratio. So notice, just by just understanding how current ratio is computed and taken one from each, one from the numerator, one from the denominator, I know I, I went down to 50-50. Now all what I have to do now is test my quick ratio. Well, remember for the quick ratio, now let me use a different color, you have to keep five the same because current liabilities is the same. And the quick ratio, the quick ratio is less than one. Therefore, I'm going to make up some numbers. My quick assets are four and I have to keep this as the same because current liabilities don't change in both in both formulas. So four divided by five, this was my original ratio. Four divided by five equal to 0 0.8. Now I'm gonna take a dollar from the numerator and dollar from the dollar from the numerator, reduce my cash with a dollar, reduce my accounts payable with a dollar. Now I'm gonna say, what happened if my quick ratio is three divided by four? Three divided by four equal to 0 0.75. So what happened to my quick ratio? My quick ratio decrease, my current ratio increase, therefore my answer is D. So once again, when you when you are looking at current ratio and quick ratios, you need to know the formula by heart. That's that's giving. Now, once you know the formula by heart, on the exam day, once they give you questions like this, test numbers, just like what I did. I said, okay, 10 divided by five equal to two. This is my current ratio. Reduce one from the numerator from, so pay off, pay off a dollar from cash, minus one cash, minus one accounts payable. So minus one cash, minus one accounts payable. My current ratio went up, I'm down to 50-50. Do the same thing for the quick ratio. Keep the denominator as the same five. Assume my quick assets are four. My quick ratio is 0 0.8. If I remove one, if I remove a dollar from cash and a dollar from accounts payable, three to four, 0 0.75. And that's your answer. So these ratios are important for the CPA exam, whether it's the FAR or the audit. You have to understand the ratios very well because in analytics, analytical procedures, you need to know how to use the ratios. At the end of this recording, again, I'm going to invite you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. Lecture, this is what I do. I help you understand the material so you can do better on the CPA exam. You can understand these courses, these prep courses that you pay thousands of dollars for them better. I will increase your effectiveness in utilizing those courses. Think of my subscription as a vitamin pill that's going to help you pass the exam. Good luck, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.